Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 11 through 14. This is a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to a church in Corinth. And starting in verse 11, he says, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Pray with me. Lord, what a, what a great day this is and great blessing that Paul gave to the church a long time ago and that Paul gives to us today. Grant us grace enough to receive that blessing. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Years ago, Gary Smalley wrote a book called The Blessing. Gary Smalley was a, a psychologist and an author, wrote several books. And in the, the book, The Blessing, one of the things that he asked 100 people was, uh, what one specific way did you know that you had received your father's blessing? It's Father's Day. It's a good time to talk about the blessings of father. Well, I'm not going to read all 100 answers, but a few of them I, I will share with you. One was, my father would put his arm around me at church and let me lay his head on my shoulder. Excuse me, on his shoulder. It'd be tough to lay your head on your own shoulder. Um, let me lay my head on his shoulder. Another one was, when I wrecked my parents' car, my father's first, first reaction was to hug me and let me cry instead of yelling at me. Another one was, my father went with me when I had to take back an ugly dress. The saleswoman had talked me into buying. Another one was, my father would let me practice pitching to him for a long time when he got home from work. Another one was, even though I had never seen him cry before, my father cried during my wedding because he was going to miss me no longer being at home. Father's blessing. It's received and given in and, and a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's with that affirming touch. There in church where the father and child, the child has the head on the father's shoulder. Sometimes it's with affirming words. Sometimes it's, it's the time spent. Maybe in throwing, playing pitch. Sometimes it's, it's a gift. A gift that maybe is a symbol of time spent or an experience spent together. Or sometimes it's, it's in that service. The dads. Dads do a lot for the children. And sometimes that's the way that children understand that they've been blessed. Is when they, they see that blessing through the time and service. Blessings. It's, it's an important part of the relationship that we have with with fathers, with mothers, brothers, sisters, friends. 
And ways that we give and ways that we receive that blessing. Well, the Apostle Paul definitely saw himself as the father there in the Corinthian church. He says in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 15, In Christ Jesus I became your father in the gospel. Well, he knew that there was a difference, and he talks about it right there, between somebody who just lays down the law, somebody who, who that's, a, that's a teacher or a tutor, or a book can do that. That it was that, that connection that he had with this church. To be able to give them blessing, but not to bless everything that they did. This church, in, in some ways, he was having a hard time with them. And he's, he's, he says it right here, mend your ways. Well, they had some ways that were holdovers from being a part of Greek and Roman culture. That it was in the Greek and the Roman culture that, that the, the highest goal was to whatever your wants and your desires were. And the more power you had, uh, the more opportunity you had to, to acquire your wants and your desires. That the highest goal was self-interest. That you might receive fame and be noticed by others. And to be able to, to dominate over other people, it was highly valued. Paul was trying to lead them away from that into a new creation that Jesus Christ had, had, had breathed into the world. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. That we, we've been made brand new. And he, he's wanting them to know that blessing. So in 2 Corinthians, verse 13, chapter 13, verse 15, he says, Do you not recognize this about yourself, that Christ is in you? That's as, as plainly as he can put it. Don't you recognize? That's what a father does. Tries to get children to recognize who they are and whose they are. To give them a sense of, of security and belonging. A sense that they can, can grow and mature and recognize their strengths. And, and there it is. Paul lays the greatest strength that we have. And don't, don't you recognize it? That it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is in you. William Randolph Hearst was owner of a newspaper, different newspapers, and he was also a very famous man, a multimillionaire, and he had one time seen a print of a famous painting, and he had to have it. So he hired a detective. The detective spent many months and many thousands of dollars tracking down this painting, and he returned with good news and some not so good news. The good news was that he found the painting. The not so good news was that Hearst already owned the painting. It was in one of his warehouses. And I think so often it is that we, we set out looking for that which we already have. We set out looking for the gifts and the strengths that we just don't recognize that we've already been given. And so Paul wants to make sure that we recognize it. And so his final blessing at the, at the end of his, his letter is what we read this morning. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, that's what I want to talk about this morning. The blessing that's been given to you and to me. And the first is that grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Years ago in Constantia, New York, Sheriff's Deputy Bill Cromie was called to an accident. Car had crashed into a, a gas pump at a gas station. Well, the car was still there. It's just the driver was gone. Well, Officer Cromie saw some woods close by and he thought well maybe the driver had had run off into the woods so he as he entered the woods the driver wasn't difficult to find at all he was crashing around in the woods banging against trees 
And when he, he shined his light on him, the driver was obviously drunk. He was scraped up. He was bleeding. He was cut from banging around in the trees in there. And the driver said, you must be Superman. Man, you've been chasing me for 45 minutes and you ain't even winded. He said, you ain't even messed up the crease in your pants. How'd you do it? And that's when Officer Crummy said, I just got here. That's when the man said, you mean I've been chasing myself? Well, if I'm that stupid, you may as well take me to jail. <laughs> well, he realized chasing himself wasn't the wisest thing. But I think often it is that we're running from things like fear. Or maybe it, it's running from guilt, something that happened in the past. Or maybe it's not something we've done, or maybe it's something that, that we believe that we are. And it's shame that we run from. It might be the fear of being found out or the, the fear of not being accepted. It might be worry or anxiety. But you and I have been given the blessing of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that blessing is that he took all those things on himself, all those things that were chasing us, all those things that would destroy us, all those things that would conquer us. And he took it on himself. This is what 2 Corinthians 5.21 says. Christ had no sin, but God made him become sin so that we, so that in Christ we could become right with God. That he took on himself all those things that would destroy us and he nailed them to the cross so that once and for all they might be killed. Their power might be taken away. And when he rose from the grave, he rose to give that power to you and me that we would no longer be chasing ourselves with fear and guilt and shame and sin. It's a blessing. A blessing was given to you and me on the cross. It's not just some, some ancient drama. It's the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that we can stop running and be free. Free to live in Christ. And to let him live his life through us. It's a blessing. This morning my invitation is receive the blessing of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second thing I want to talk about is the love of God. Receive the, the blessing of the love of God. A lot of times Folks say, well, I read that word love in the Bible, and, you know, I know exactly what that means. Ah, it's Father's Day, and we're talking about a father's love. But fathers, you know what it is to love your children. Mothers, you know what it is to love your children. Children, hopefully you know what it is to be loved by a father or mother. We understand that kind of love. It's a fierce love. It's a love that's in, an instinct it's as natural as can be. We don't love all children equally. No, we love our children the most. It's a part of who we are as parents. But it's, it's a lot of us have experienced that love. And so we say, well, I know what love is. Or it may be that feeling of falling in love. Somebody described it as the feeling you feel when you're feeling something you've never felt before. You kind of get the idea that it's feeling. A feeling of falling in love, a, a feeling that takes us over, a, a feeling that sometimes makes us do foolish things. But it's a feeling. It's a natural feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. Love of a friend. Someone who'll stand by you through thick and thin. Love of a country. Later on this week, we'll be celebrating our patriotic concert. And love of country is a wonderful thing. It's the most natural thing to invest our lives in something bigger than ourselves, something that, that helps us, us all out. Love of country. But all of these are natural loves. And I like what C.S. Lewis says. He says that every human love has a tendency to claim for itself divine authority. And when love of country becomes 
divine authority. It's a nationalism that's going on in Russia right now and Ukraine. It says what our wants, that well, they matter more than anybody else's wants, so they invade. So countries, whoever's biggest takes what they want. A nationalism that caused World War I and World War II. The falling in love. Sometimes it claims for itself divine authority. It's an appetite that, that wants to be satisfied, but very rarely is. It just knows that it's one. It knows that the desire is there, and it keeps going. Even that natural love of a parent, it's instinctive. Lions have the same love for, for their cubs, and it's a fierce love. Well, no one would ever claim that these loves are Christian love. And that's not the word that's used right here with the love of God. As a matter of fact, over 99.9 tenths percent of the time, the Bible uses that word love. Even when it says, husbands, love your wives. It's not talking about that natural love. Fathers, love your children. When Paul says that, he's not talking about that natural love of a child. He uses the same word that's used here, and that word is agape. It's a choice. It's a decision. And that's the love that God has for you and for me. God doesn't love us because we're so lovely, so lovely and so lovable. He doesn't love us because, well, it's just instinctive and he's got to. He loves us because he's made the choice to love us and do what's best for us. In the transforming love of God is a love that takes us over and, and it transforms our will where we can love even the person that's not been lovable at all. We can love our enemies. We can love the one that's, that's hurt us and do what's best for them. Not just what would make us feel good. It's a love that comes from God that's, that's, that's not possible without the strength of the risen Christ alive in you and me. Paul wants to make sure that we realize that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is in you and in me. Through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Receive the blessing. Receive the love of God and be transformed by it. Receive the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is what it says in verse 14 here. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's a little town in North Carolina called Murphy, North Carolina. It's just right over the state line from the state of Georgia. Well, Years ago, there was an eccentric woman who lived there, and in her will, she deeded a portion of her estate to God. Well, the judge who was trying to probate the will was scratching his head exactly how he was going to, to give a portion of her estate to God. So feeling a little cheeky, he turned to the, the deputy that was there in the courtroom and said, Deputy, here's a summons. Go summons God to my courtroom. Well, after two weeks, the deputy came back and reported to the judge after a due and diligent search that God could not be found in Murphy, North Carolina. Oh, well, I understand the sentiment, but, you know, the deputy wasn't looking in the right place. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know you are a temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? And the word you that's used right there, it's plural. That if it had been written collect correctly, it would have been, don't y'all know, y'all are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in all y'all. That there's something that happens when we come together where two or more are gathered in His name. That the Spirit of God joins our spirit with His Spirit. There's blessing and strength. There's a power that, that we don't have on our own. And it's a power that, that transforms us into a new creation. It's a power that doesn't come from an ec economic power. 
that says money makes right. It's a power that doesn't come from a political power that says majority makes right. It's a power that doesn't come from the power of force that says might makes right. It's the power of the risen Christ who ushers in a new creation. And that power's name is Jesus. He is the hope of the world. Not just the hope for you and for me. He's the only hope that can change a heart. It's a blessing. And this morning, my invitation is receive the blessing. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Receive the blessing and the love of God and let Him transform. Transform your heart. Receive the blessing of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, it may be that uh, you've been chased. You've been chased for a while. It might be by your fears. It might be by your, your guilt or your shame. It may be that you've been chased by your worries. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and for me to to kill, to take away the power of all those things that would destroy us. And he rose again to, to live his life through you and me. It's Jesus Christ alive in you and me that's the hope of the world. And if you've never prayed to to receive him, I want to pray with you now. Let's pray. Jesus, this is a day of blessing because it's the power of your spirit that's here. May we never take that for granted. But this day, renew that relationship with you. Or if we've never started that relationship with you, start it now, this day. Invite you to make your home in our hearts that we might receive the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. and Stop running. Lord, it may be that we never received the love of God, that blessing available to us. The the only love that we've ever taken part in has been a natural love. And it may have led us to some places that we're entirely frustrated and don't want to be. You have more for us than that. Grant grace enough that we receive the love of God and know the fellowship of your Holy Spirit that your spirit joins us together and that together as the people of God, we might know that we are your temple in the world and that we can go in this world and then one by one share what you've done for us. You are the hope of the world. Use us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. 
He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir, an organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.